Let's go to Andrew in Dayton, Ohio. What's up, Andrew? Hey, what's going on, Dr. John? How are you, sir? Partying, my brother. What's up? Oh, uh, here's, I'm just going to cut to it. Uh, how do I grieve? Well, that's a, that's an open-ended broad question. What do you want to grieve, man? Yeah, everything. Um, let's, uh, let's go back. Um, year ago, my mom got sick and, uh, she went in the hospital about six days later. My sister, my baby sister got sick. What'd they get she sick? What'd the they get sick with? COVID. Okay. And, um, my mom was in the hospital 42 days, my sister 35. Um, and, uh, my sister passed first. Oh, geez. And it, it'll be a year coming up this week. And then, um, my sister had special needs. Mm -hmm. So the, she was, she was on a respirator and all the machines that they hook her up to. And basically, um, the doctor wouldn't pull her off the machine that wasn't doing anything but keeping her heartbeat until we told our mom and asked her permission to take her off the machine, even though my mom was incapacitated. And so we told her because you know, it's, it was the right thing to do. And, um, six days later, my mom passed. Yeah. And, and I, and I know it was related to finding out that she'd lost a child. Hmm. Not, no doubt in my mind. And so coming up on a year and I just, I don't know that I've grieved it at all. Yeah, I've 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 been sad. I've 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 cried more times than I could possibly count. I've lost hours of sleep every night. Mm -hmm. um, it's created all sorts of other health problems, yep. which is telling me I'm not doing something right. No, it's not. And it's not. Hey, it's not. It's not. Andrew, I I think you have you have grieved it. You are grieving it. This is what grief is. It's crying at the weirdest moments. It's waking up in the middle of the night. It's throwing up. It's feeling sick. It's looking at like, if you have like a whoop strap, it's looking at it and like you're at 25% recovery for four months. It's like your body shuts itself off because it can't. It, it it's, it's so overwhelming. This is grief, man. And it's, Awful. But but then how do I how do I work through it? Because it's not something. I mean, I've lost people before. Um, hey, dude, years, bro, my, not your mom, man, not your mom, yeah. not your special needs sister that you've been defending since the day she was born. Hmm. Like you had a purpose, and your purpose was your sister. And in thirty days, it went away. And you've got your mom, dude. That's a whole other level. That's not like losing a friend or losing a buddy or losing a grandparent. That's your mother. I've sat with people who are 63 years old who lose their 80-something-year-old parents and they just unspool because it's their mom. It's their dad. You know what I mean? This is different. And you're coming up on an anniversary moment. And for whatever reason, I, I don't know the physiology of it or the biology of it, but I know that anniversary markers – our bodies tend to just ramp it up. They just turn the heat up on us and things get a little bit sharper, a little bit lower, a little bit darker. And in your case, we're ending, we're heading off into the winter season. So things are getting grayer and colder and it just all works together to say, screw the world, right? Yeah. yeah. And can I be honest? Um, and I, for those listening, I don't want to hear any of your political nonsense. I got a friend who's hurting here. Um, but when you lose your mom and your sister, and then a politician gets up and says, this never counted, this wasn't ever real, or it's all over now, mm -hmm. yeah, you're still holding, you know, you can look over and see your sister's jacket hanging on the hook. Or when your buddies yeah. roll their eyes and the next politician gets up and it's like, I'm running for office and say this is stupid. And it's like, well, I lost my mom. And I lost my, you know what I mean? So there's an extra, I'm, I'm hearing across the country, especially with COVID losses, there's an extra dose of 
hurt on top of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because it's because my mom, like it's the story of my mom. It's the story of my sister. And suddenly it's turned into a caricature or a drama or a political move. Dude, it's my mom. Yeah, right, right. And so there's all sorts of stuff on top of this. Um, here's the best way I can, the, the best picture I've seen of grief. When your mom passed away and your sister passed away, they cast a long shadow over you. And you're sitting in that shadow and you can see it laid out as though you're standing in the shadow of a large tree, okay? That shadow length and size will always be that, that big. You lost your mom. What you can't see now is that you will continue to grow. And in one year, five years, 10 years, 15 years, you will be so far out beyond that shadow. The shadow is still the same size, but you will have developed and grown and created a new life. There will be seasons when you find yourself knocked down, sitting up against that tree in that shadow, and it casts over you again. And that might be on the five-year anniversary or the 10-year anniversary. You hear a song or you see a special needs kid that reminds you of your little sister, and mm. your body just yanks you back into it. It's cool, man. It's cool. But what you can't see on this side of it is your growth. I would tell you not to fight it right now, man. You're a year in. I would spend here. here let, me, let me just say what I would do if I was you. Is that, is that a fair way to approach this? Absolutely. Um, I would sit down and write mom a letter. And I would sit down and write sister a letter. And if you're really brave, I'd find some way to read those letters too. Whether if you have a sister or a sibling or you're married or something like that, I would read that out loud. And in that letter, there's usually three parts. One of them is how pissed off I am that you left me. How mad I am that you're gone. Whether that's mad at them, mad, mad at God, mad at the doctors, mad at whoever. Another one is, I'm just so sad. I miss you. Here's what it feels like now that you're gone. And then the third part of that letter is, here's what you've missed. I got a new job. I got a promotion. I'm letting my hair grow long. I've gained 48 pounds, right? Whatever, <laughs> like, like the Astros are going to win the World Series again, right? That's me casting that. Oh, I hope it, not. <laughs> I hope not. Right, so it's, it's here's what you've missed. And here's, here's why that's important. When we transition to here's what you've missed, we are slowly teaching our bodies and our minds that it's happened. There's a period at the end of the sentence and life is continuing to move. And over time, you write letters about what you've missed, how much I miss you. And those letters will get more and more infrequent and they'll get um, shorter and you'll find yourself laughing again. And then you're going to find yourself, you, have you already done this? Where you find yourself just laughing your butt off, dude. Like you've something so funny and it's usually super profane. Like you wouldn't say it in front of your mom, but you're laughing. And then you feel guilty for having joy, for yeah. laughing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Notice when you feel guilty laughing. Notice when you feel guilty after sex. Notice when you feel guilty about some of these pleasurable moments in life that suddenly you think, wait a minute, I shouldn't be having pleasure because I'm still because they died, right? And don't beat yourself up over it, but just notice it and then exhale and say, no, I'm allowed to smile. My mom would want me to be having a good time. My sister would want me to smile. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I struggle with the different roles I have to carry right now. Um, what roles? I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a husband. Okay. I'm a dad. Okay. Um, I've got... Uh, two other biological sisters and then an adopted special needs sister. Okay. And then I've got my dad and then my mom's mom is still alive. So I feel the burden of responsibility to help her because that was mom's role. And it's, I mean, it's just challenging. It's, it's overwhelming sometimes. Here's, and, let, and, I want to flip the whole thing over. Okay. Okay. You can only do that type of heavy lifting if Andrew comes first, if Andrew's physical health comes first, you're sleeping and you're eating right, you're moving your body, you're exercising a couple times a week, you have some friends that you're talking to, you get buddies together once a week and you'll go to throw darts or you go, I don't know, build something, play guitar, whatever it is, but you um, get a group together. Only then 
you go to church, you go back, you get reconnected with a faith community, whatever that looks like for you. Only then are you reinforced enough to then be the dad that your kids need. And by the way, hopefully you've told your kids how sad you are. Oh, absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Good. Don't rob them of this moment of watching. Here's what a man who loves his daughter feels and is going through. Don't take that from him. Okay. Be honest with them. Otherwise they're going to feel your angst and they're going to feel your distance and they're going to blame themselves for it. Give, give that gift to them to let them watch. No, you I tell breathe. them, I tell them all the time. Good. Um, I, I get, I mean, my kids are 12 and 10. Perfect. And so they're, they're at that age of understanding mm -hmm. and all of the things that they have to process through. Um, you know, we tried to protect them when we were in the hospital mm -hmm. where they were in the hospital. Um, I was driving an hour every day to go see them mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to keep, keep them from all of the information. And, um, we, we learned afterwards that that was probably not the best way to do that. Sure. So here and, we are. So you're and, doing a good job of, of communicating now, right? Yeah, we're, we're Great. on it now. We, we, Great. we learned the hard way. Good, 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 um, good, good. And so can I say something hard, man? Please. I'll say something good, something good. And then I'll say something hard. Okay. Whenever we lose somebody that we love, especially they were hurting as badly as your sister and your mom are hurting. Um, the ventilator passing is, is brutal. You saw it firsthand, right? Yeah. One of my jobs when I did crisis response was if somebody had like, let's say they'd lost a kid, say a kid had died by suicide and mom was coming home and she was coming to the house. My job was actually to meet mom in the foyer of that home or in the front yard and not let mom come back and see the kid. Mm. And wow. here's why. Because here was my standard line that I always gave and it wasn't a line, it was the truth. You don't want this to be the last picture of your son or daughter in your mind. You want that last picture, the time y'all hugged when he left your house, that time at Thanksgiving when you were throwing marshmallows at each other. You don't want this last picture because it freeze frames in your mind. And here's what we miss. They're not hurting anymore. Huh. Okay. The last time you saw your sister, she was in hell. The last time you saw your mom, you watched her dissolve like just dissipate in front of you and listen brother they're not hurting anymore okay yeah and it's making peace with oh yeah they're finally free they are free 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 and it's sitting in that for a minute because right now your body is still trying to make sure everything's okay with them on the ventilator they're not there anymore here's the hard thing my brother, they're gone. And no amount of work or trying to cobble together more things to throw on your shoulders is going to make their life any more okay. They're gone. Yeah. And it's being able to open your hands up and for the first time in a year, drop your shoulders down. Tell your sisters, I need some help. Tell your dad, how are you, man? I can help you, but I can't, I can't carry you. See the difference yeah, there? Um, I, I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have my good days. Of course you do. Bro, you're not broken. Hey, you are not broken. You're not malfunctioning. You're a, you're, yeah. a, you're a son who loved his mom, and you're a dope brother who loved his sister. That's what you are. And that means so how do I, it hurts. So how do I handle – so when these moments hit mm -hmm. and and – uh, being perfectly honest, you're the first person I've talked to in a year outside of close friends. Okay. So I feel like I need more help than what I'm getting, but okay. how do I handle the, those moments where I'm wrestling with the regret, you know, the, the missed Thanksgiving, the, the time I blew mom off to go hang with my buddies, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the story may be in those moments come up and then they're just, crushing sometimes that's right that's right and so there's there's two ways to move forward from this number one is when those thoughts pop into your mind understand you have a choice you have a choice to meditate on that lightning bolt that pops in remember that time you blew mom off for a text message 
and literally say out loud, not doing that. Hmm. Not doing it. That's your brain trying to meditate on the things, on the negativity, so that it can prevent hurt in the future. And it doesn't prevent hurt in the future. It's just your brain trying to do the best it can because it's got a very primitive operating system on it that says, look, bear, run from bear, watch out for bears, <laughs> right? Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so those lightning bolts pop into your mind when you're walking down the street. And you remember that time you snapped at your special needs sister because she was driving you crazy. And you go, nope. And here's the key. Here's the second key. You have an immediate thought to replace that with. A time you okay. and your little sister laughed so hard, you thought you were going to both vomit on each other. <laughs> that time you and your mom got into a donut eating contest and you saw that nine-year-old girl come out of her in a weird way. Or the time your mom cussed at you and it just slipped out and you laughed, <laughs> right? Let's go to that. And here's what will happen in short order. If you will do that work, because you weren't a bad son, you're a human being. If you will do that work in a shorter amount of time than you think, your body will change the default setting to every time you think of them, they will be filled with light and joy, not, oh my God, they just died. Okay. Okay. It is saying, nope, not doing it. I'm not going to meditate on the negative. I remember that time mom, fill in the blank, did something hilarious. Or I'm calling dad. I'm calling dad, see how he's doing. And here's the other big boy thing you got to do. You got to sit down with your wife in the next 48 hours, okay? And tell her, I have not been honest with you for a year. I've tried to be tough. I've tried to carry all this. I felt a ton of responsibility. And I'm heartbroken because I miss my sister. And I'm heartbroken because I miss my mom. And there's going to be moments in the next six months while I'm healing that I'm not going to be able to carry it all. And I'm going to ask you, I may lean over and say, hey, I need some help today. And that would be one of the greatest gifts you give your wife. Because she's been feeling insane and helpless sitting on her own hands the last year. And finally, her husband's going to say, I'm not Superman. I'm calling reality as it is. Can I get some help? And she's going to say, God, yeah. yes, I'm ready for you. Is that fair? That's absolutely fair because I think she would – she's been the one telling me to get some help. That's right. Because um, she – here's why. She feels you not sleeping, and she feels you sitting at the kitchen table four feet from – I mean four inches from her and 4,000 miles away from her. She yeah. feels it, and she doesn't know how to bridge that gap, and so she's asking you to walk across it. And if you sat down and had that moment of vulnerability tonight – Cancel whatever plans you got tonight and take her out to dinner and just say, I haven't been honest with you. I've been trying to carry all this myself and I'm sorry. I need some, I, I need you to pick up some slack for a season. Oh my gosh. What a gift that would be for your home, my brother. What a gift. Um, I'll say it one more time. You're not broken, man. You're just in it. Um, do sit down and write your mom that letter. Do sit down and write your sister that letter. Read it to your wife if you can. Read it to your sisters if you can. Have them write letters and y'all can get together for the one year anniversary of their passing and have another celebration slash day of mourning. Let your kids hear those letters. Bring people into this and you're, you will begin to grow and stand beyond this shadow. That's my promise, my brother. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. You've, you, you've been through it, and now we're going to ask ourselves, what do we do next? And I got you. Thanks for calling, my brother. 